Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Beyond the Cage. I am your host, Jim Graham. Joining me on the line, we have a special guest. She was victorious at Invicta FC 14. She is Bianna Bennett. And Bianna, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to, to talk to you today. All right, first up, uh, got to talk about uh, the weight cut here for Invicta 14. Unfortunately, uh, you missed weight uh, this time around. Just kind of looking over everything that, that happened and went into your, your preparation for the fight, were you able to pinpoint any reason why you missed weight this time around? Um, yeah, there were uh, several giant glaring reasons. <laughs> the reason I didn't make weight, and I, I know that I said that was a little bit of a laugh, but, you know, I'm I'm still upset of that point because I, I want to be professional. Professional goes in there and makes weight, and it killed me to come in overweight, honestly. Um, one of the, the big reasons was it, well, as soon as they said that I was going to be fighting Katja, that... I actually tore my uh, MCL at a grade two tear of my uh, West MCL, and I wasn't able to do my cardio. I thought about going out for the fight, but I wanted this fight so badly, so I did it. And you know, tried to to get back in. I went from doing running every day until till not, and then gradually working myself up with the exercise bike, and then finally being able to run. You know, a few weeks before my fight there, and then. I had a things were, were going well and I was on pace to, to make weight even given that and then two weeks before my fight, um, the gym that I had been training at for years thought it would be a good idea to fire my coach, which my my loyalty is to him. He brought me to where I'm at and and helped me get so far in my career and so, you know, we were in limbo trying to find a gym, trying to find where to go and Honestly, overnight, I retained five pounds of stress weight, and I I just could not get that to budge for the life of me, and that was about two weeks out, and so kind of a combination of, of all of those things played a huge factor in, in that weight cut. So, obviously, this was your second fight scheduled for 115, and even with all those uh, factors you mentioned, do you still feel that the straw weight division is the division for you? You know, I, I really think it is. It was it was kind of hard, and I know a lot of people would take it as that uh, maybe I couldn't make the weight. But when I fought on that card against uh, Norma in, in L.A., I, I made the 116 because you have the one-pound allowance there, and I made it with ease. I made it – I've had such worse cuts to 125, so I felt really good and really confident, and I knew that I would make it for this weight cut, but – but just with everything happened with all the stress and everything, my body just, the stress just kind of shut it down and stopped me from making it. But I do feel like I can do quite well at that weight. You know, at least we're, we're, we're talking with my camp to see kind of what would be the best for me because I was, I was happy at 25, happy at 15. I just need to look and see what's going to be best for my career from here on out. Now, you just mentioned uh, a minute ago about your knee and MCL. Is that going to keep you out of uh, action long? Oh, no. It's it's completely healed. We're we're good to go right now. I I wanted, like I said, I wanted this fight so badly that I actually, um, I didn't need to have surgery because it was, there was just the MCL, no meniscus tear or anything like that. So I stayed off of it. I didn't overdo it. I, I babied it, and so it, it's 100% healed. It just took time out of my training camp, which that was very unfortunate. Now, looking at the fight against Katja Kankampa, uh, I thought the first two rounds were pretty close, uh, probably one apiece heading into that final frame, and you even uh, talked about this in your post-fight uh, interview on the broadcast that you feel obviously you didn't have a great third round. Uh, regardless, the judges still gave you the victory. Uh, looking back, do you think that you did enough in the first two rounds uh, to get the victory, or, or, do you, or are you even still kind of mystified that uh, that Ken Kampa didn't get her hand raised? You know, I I hate watching my fights after the fact, even especially when I have a terrible performance, even when it's a good performance. But you know, I've I've been was severely depressed after that fight. 
but I went back, you know, rewatched that first and the second, and you know, they were they were close. They, they definitely were, but I do feel like I did more in those first two rounds to to win it. And the reason I was so upset at the end of the fight is because I, I hold myself to an extremely high standard. I know what I'm capable of, and I did absolutely nothing in in that third round, but just kind of roll around and just not my game plan, not up to the par that I should be. And so that that's why I was upset about that third round. But, you know, I, I do feel like I, I did win the fight because I did win the first two rounds. And, you know, MMA scoring is round by round. It's not the, the fight overall. And and I, I know some people might see it otherwise, but um, I, I do feel like I, I had that or, if anything, it – with being that third round, you know, at the very most it would have been a draw, but I, I, it's hard for me because that being that third round was just, it was just awful. I felt so upset about it that I should have given more to my opponent. I should have given more to the fans, to myself, to my team and coaches and everything. Jim Graham talking with Deanna Bennett here on Beyond the Cage. You can follow her on Twitter at Deanna D. Bennett. And this is a fight that probably you and a lot of other uh, people would have liked to see run back to maybe see whether it was right the judges gave you the decision or whatnot. But unfortunately for you and even uh, Kankampa to try to get another shot at you, she decided to retire uh, after uh, many years in the game and did that kind of surprise you just so quickly after the fight that she announced her retirement from the sport? You know, I I was really surprised to see that, but I, I can understand where she's at. You know, where she's been doing it for a really long time, and you know, she has a husband. You know, possibly you know wants a family, something like that. And um, I I was sad to hear that she did retire because I definitely would have loved a rematch. Just so that we can we can go out there and, and do it again and both be a hundred percent and to to really give the, the fight that everyone deserved to see instead of what they did. Now looking at the rest of Invicta F C fourteen, uh were there any other fights that uh you got to watch or were really interested in uh checking out while you were there in Kansas City? Um, there was a, a lot of good fights on there. I didn't get to see too many because I was in the, the back for, for most of them. I, I caught a little bit of, of Tanya, um, and she's amazing. And seeing that fight was just seeing what she does in there. It's something that I actually look up to. She goes in there without any fear, and she goes in there and gets the job done. And um, she's an amazing fighter, so I was glad I was able to catch some of that. But some of kind of the, the up and coming talent, um, Andrea Lee, I was able to go back and watch a little bit of hers after the fact and you know, she's an she's an amazing athlete and I'm really looking forward to kind of see where she goes with the sport and everything and um definitely always wanted to check and see Roxanne because seeing her, you know, resurgence in this last few years and just seeing how she went from being in the sport forever and now just having this second wind and going in there and, and tearing through people has been awesome to watch. All right. One thing I definitely wanted to ask you is the interesting attire won by Rosa Ascovedo in the cat uh, onesie singlet. Uh, were you a fan of what Rosa wore out to the cage? You know, I don't think I personally would have ever won that out to the cage, <laughs> but – to each their own. I mean, there's some people on my team that I think probably uh, were Googling where he signed one of those cat singlets there. <laughs> so, in fact, if they don't Google it, then I might just end up getting them that for uh, Christmas there because I'm pretty sure they would love it. But, uh, you know, to each their own. You know, you got to go out there and give your own flair and things. And so, more power to her. Now, uh, looking up possibly for your next opponent, either uh, late this year or early in uh, 2016, uh, Invicta, despite what many fans uh, think about the UFC acquiring a lot of their athletes uh, in recent memory, there's still a lot of talent that Invicta has, such as Alexa Grasso. Uh, you also have J.G. Aldridge, uh, Carolina Kowalczyk, if I 
probably pr- mispronounced her name. Also the <laughs> champion, uh, Livia Souza. Uh, is there anyone in particular uh, you would like to take on for your next fight, Deanna? You know, I I want to fight people that I can to, to get to the top, honestly. Um, I would definitely, I know um, on the next show, uh, Livia is fighting Alexa, and I, I would love another shot at, at I would love a shot at whoever wins that fight, but being that I didn't make weight on this fight, I feel like I should have to have one more fight before I do um, get the chance there, just, you know, out of respect and out of everything um, that that's kind of, I don't know if it's a punishment I put on myself, but I should have another fight before I do get a chance there. And I would love to get in there with Carolina, honestly. Um, when they asked me about this, past fight, there was a very short list of people that I wanted to fight, you know, Kacha was obviously on there, but so was Carolina, just because, you know, she's 7-0, and um, we're both undefeated, I think it would be a great test um, of of our skills to go in there and see what we can do. Now, speaking of the strawweight division, like I said, uh, the UFC, that division kind of has been taken storm uh, by the ladies, a lot of them formerly of Invicta. Is that something you see yourself uh, in the future fighting in the UFC at 115 pounds? You know, if the opportunity did arise, then that's something that me and my team would consider. You know, I I want to fight the the best that's out there, and you know, there I could I could see a lot of these fighters. There are people that I would definitely love to be able to test my skill against, and so you know, maybe sometime in the future, that's something that would come up and. You know, if it did, I I wouldn't I wouldn't shy away from it. But it just kind of it comes out of just talking to my camp, talking to my my coach, Coach Mertlick, and seeing kind of what the best path for me to take for my career is. Now you mentioned uh, Souza will have her title on the line uh, pretty soon. Here, uh, do you think she'll be able to uh, keep it? <laughs> you know, that's a, a tough fight, and I I was really sad when that fell off of this last card um, because those two are, they're both amazing fighters going out there to see it and um, I've honestly played it through in my head several times, (laughs) probably more than several times, just kind of seeing the outcome because I I really, with that win that she had over Tenkampa, you know, I I definitely became a fan in, in Susa and I've been on several cards with Alexa and just seeing kind of how how dedicated she is to the sport, how how great and how much she improves with every fight that you know, she she's tough and so I I can't pick <laughs> a, a winner honestly with that because 'cause I've seen it go several different ways and so we'll we'll just have to see what happens there on that next card. I want to ask you this because I think it's going to be a big moment, not just for the UFC, but women's MMA in general, uh, come November in Australia when Ronda Rousey and Joanna Jacek will both defend their titles for the first time. Both women titles are being defended at the same time on the same card, being uh, promoted like that in a huge stadium show, potentially 70,000 people in a stadium in Australia. Just what do you think about the potential uh, for that event? I believe UFC 193 uh, in a couple weeks here. You know, I am super excited for that. Just kind of seeing the growth that this sport has had since I first started in MMA until now has been amazing. When when I first started, I know it was probably, what, five years ago? doesn't seem very long ago, but it, it's grown so much since then. And to see in the UFC somewhere where, you know, Back in a few years ago, Dana White said women will never be in the UFC to now having this card in Australia where the main event and the co-main event are the the two women's champions. It's it's amazing. And I'm just super excited for kind of seeing where we're going to go here with uh, the women's MMA and just kind of seeing how many people get excited about it and and everything. And it's going to be great. I'm really excited to see that. All right, I'll get you out of here with this, Deanna. Of course, uh, this past week, the Nevada State Athletic Commission handed down a hefty suspension on one Mr. Nick Diaz for five years and $165,000 for a failed uh, drug test for marijuana. I just wanted to get your thoughts on this whole uh, Nick Diaz thing and whether you thought it was uh, too harsh or too excessive uh, by the state of Nevada. 
Um, yeah, I, I definitely think it was too excessive because you had both him and his opponent tested positive for a banned substance. Um, but you have one where he got suspended for a year and then one where he got suspended for five years. One was an actual performance enhancing drug who got the, the lighter sentence there and he's almost cleared again to come back. And then you have Nick Diaz who's got Five years, which is a, a that's a career killer. You can't say for five years, especially with somebody you know, has been in the sport for so long for there. But you know, you can you know play devil dad ticket a little bit and say you know maybe it's not the first time that he's tested positive for for marijuana. But but still, I think that that sentence is is ridiculous completely. I, I think it was way over the top and. Um, I would definitely love to see that repealed because that's a great athlete that you basically just ended his career in Nevada. <laughs> she is Deanna Bennett, Invicta FC strawweight fighter. You can follow her on Twitter at Deanna D. Bennett. And Deanna, thanks for coming on the show. Really appreciate it, and uh, look forward to your uh, next fight. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Once again, that was Deanna Bennett right here on Beyond the Cage.